Hello and welcome to a new lecture. In this lecture, we are going to implement the basic GAN model and apply the training methodology. Let's get started. We start by opening the Jupyter Notebook for this section, section 2, which is available in the course material. We start by importing the necessary libraries, Torch, NumPy, Matplotlib, and don't forget to use the directive matplotlib inline so that the figures will be rendered inside the Jupyter Notebook. Next, we make sure that CUDA is available if you've got CUDA installed and you've got a GPU. And if you don't have a GPU, don't worry, you can always use Google Collaboratory, which is available at the end of this section, a reference to the same code on the Google Collab. Afterwards, we define the device. If CUDA is available, the device will be the GPU CUDA device otherwise we use the CPU this is important to ensure that the code runs whatever you have a GPU or you don't have a GPU now we define a global variable noise dim for noise dimension this defines the length of the vector of the noise that will be given to the generator so that the generator will use that noise which is sampled from random distribution Gaussian distribution to map the random distribution to the data distribution available in the training set in this case MNIST dataset it is convenient to define the noise dimension to be 100 you can play around with other values as well next we define the generator model Similar to what we have done in section 1, we define a class generator which inherits from PyTorch module. Inside the constructor def underscore underscore init underscore underscore, we invoke or trigger the constructor of the super class by using the method super, and then we define the sequential model, which is the actual model design we are using. In this case, we have three fully connected layers. The first layer is linear which is a fully connected dense layer which has got 1200 or 1200 neurons and then followed by relo activation function then followed by a dropout which is used for regularization and remember it acts like bagging or a symbol of bagging of models this helps the model through training to choose the best one by deactivating some of the links connecting some neurons in the hidden layers Finally, the last fully connected layer is given sigmoid activation, which is a squashing function, will squash the output to be either 0 or 1. Remember that when we import the MNIST dataset, we convert the data to a tensor, and that automatically converts the pixel intensity values from 0 to 255 down to from 0 to 1. And this way, when we apply the sigmoid activation, we ensure that we always get output of the generator for the pixel values between 0 and 1 and that will act similar to the original samples available in the dataset. Finally, inside the forward method, we define the operations to be carried out during the forward pass. We reshape the model to get a two-dimensional matrix that's of the batch size and then of the other size by using the negative one to mean whatever is the next size going to be. And then we pass the batch through the fully connected network, which we have defined above. Finally, we return the output. Now let's define the max out activation function, which we have discussed in the slides in the earlier lecture. Again, we define a class max out inheriting from torch module. In the constructor, we invoke the super class. And then we set the attribute of the class self dot number of pieces to be equal to the number of pieces passed as a parameter to the constructor. And then inside the forward method, we define the operations to be carried throughout the forward path. Remember, forward method is given a batch, and the batch in this case is two dimensional matrix since we are working with flattened image. In future sections, we may deal with three-dimensional and four-dimensional tensors but this is not the case in this example first we start by using the method assert which throws an error if the condition given is not hold in this case we make sure that the second dimension x the shape of one of the batch is divisible by the number of pieces which we assigned in the constructor for example if we have got an input the second dimension is 625 and then We've got the number of pieces to be 5, we ensure that 625 modulus 5 is equal 0, otherwise it throws an error. Next we reshape the input batch to be 4 dimensional, 
The first dimensional will be the shape of the batch size. The second dimension, we divide the original second dimension by the number of pieces, and here we use double slashes, which means integer division. The third dimension is the number of pieces. So for example, if we have got a batch of 64 samples, and then we've got the second dimension of 625, then the first dimension after we reshape the input tensor will be 64. The second dimension will be 625 divided by 5, which is 125. The third dimension will be 5. And then if we've got remaining dimension, we use them. This is only used to make the method more generic and apply it for other high dimensional tensors. Next, we use the max method available in PyTorch. We use ret.max, but along the third dimension, dimension equal to 2, because the counting starts from 0, so 2 is a third dimension. So that will return the maximum value along the number of pieces. That will give us a tensor of dimensions batch size multiplied by 125 if the original dimension was 625, which is the original dimension divided by the number of pieces. And then we return the output. Next, we design the discriminator model. Similar to the generator, we inherit from the torch module. In the constructor, we define the sequential model, fully connected layers. But be aware here that we are using fully connected layer and max out activation and then fully connected layer. So the out features from the first fully connected layer is 625. The max out number of pieces is 5. Then the input features for the next fully connected layer is 125. And then we repeat again by making the out feature 625, add max out activation, and then another fully connected layer, and so on. Finally, we apply a sigmoid activation function to do the squashing, but this time we mean by zero is interpreted as a fake sample, a generated sample, and one as a real sample, a sample that's available in the training set, or a generated sample that cannot be distinguished from the original data set. Finally, we define the forward method and apply the same reshape to get two dimensional vector or tensor. And then we apply the fully connected network on the batch and return the output. Now that we have defined the model and the activations, in the next lecture, we continue the implementation and apply the training methodology and see the output. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.